What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. It is the calm after the storm. We are now on the Monday after the 2024 NFL draft. So everything that we have been waiting for, it happened. Now we got to react. Today, we are going to be recapping that NFL draft, talking about the players, talking about the prospects, talking about where they went, what type of draft capital they had, all of that stuff for your fantasy football teams because I know that starting today and over the next week or two, a lot of people are going to be starting their home drafts for those 2024 rookie drafts. So we're going to be talking about that today. I want to thank each and every one of you guys that came in. You showed out. You showed up to that BDGE NFL draft stream. I appreciate you guys. If you came from the League FFB, it means more to me than you know. But without wasting any more time, why don't we just hop right into today's video and let's start talking about some of these prospects. So I got it pulled up on the screen right now. You guys can see this. We are going to be starting at the quarterback position because this was a big part of the conversation for the first round of the NFL draft because we had six quarterbacks go in the first 12 picks. So let's talk about some of these guys. Caleb Williams, no surprise, he goes to the Chicago Bears. He also got Romo Dunze in the first round. So that is going to continue adding to the weapons that Caleb has there in Chicago. He's the 101 for me. It is no question. It is no debate. He is the guy that you are going to be picking number one overall in your Super flex drafts and I think that's the way it should have been and it has been for a long time now but Jaden Daniels he goes number two to the Washington Commanders we expected that one as well now there was rumblings about Drake May potentially landing somewhere else if the New England Patriots decided to trade out they did not so they sat there they decided to pick right there at the number three pick they take Drake May now he got a couple weapons not necessarily any of the top tier weapons but they added some players for him so we'll talk about that later but JJ McCarthy he goes number 10 to the Minnesota Vikings we talked about that landing spot being one of the best I think this is going to to do wonders for JJ McCarthy's dynasty stock and as it sits right now I have him in my tier three of players he is now my seventh overall player he has jumped Brock Bowers in my rankings he was at eight before the draft now he's at seven and I think that there are going to be some people who could argue that he could go higher I'm keeping him at seven right now I just want to temper those expectations a tiny bit and then I think the ones that were a little bit more surprising you see it right here Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. now Michael Penix Jr. that was one of the craziest one of the most surprising picks I think I've ever seen in my life while watching the NFL draft. Obviously, the Falcons has just signed Kirk Cousins. Four years, $180 million, $100 million plus guaranteed. Then they draft Michael Penix, eighth overall. And if you tapped into that draft stream, you know Nick, he's a Falcons fan. He was in shambles, man. This, this was out of the ordinary. This was nothing that we expected. And for your Dynasty Fantasy football rosters, this puts a big wrench in how we are going to be viewing Michael Penix for the foreseeable future. I think at least two years until Michael Penix sees the field. But if you ask the Falcons, they said that they wanted to follow the Jordan Love blueprint. That doesn't make Michael Penix undraftable. But I think this makes him a guy that we probably should not be drafting in the first round, despite him getting top 10 draft capital, because we've talked about that top 10 draft capital being so good for these quarterback prospects. Well, this is a very unique situation. I think this is one where that might not apply. But still, that was a very, very crazy pick. I think we're probably going to be viewing Michael Penix a little bit differently right now. I have him as my 14th player overall, so the 202 right now in your 12-man leagues. That is probably where I'm going to be taking him, and I think that there's an argument that a couple guys, depending on your team needs, could be taken above him as well. And then Bo Nix, he goes 12th overall to the Sean Payton-led Denver Broncos. He's going to be QB1 for them. He's a big riser for me. I currently have him as my 10th overall prospect, a guy that's probably going to fall into the back half of your first rounds. And Sean Payton, he said he baited the Vikings. I, dude is too full of himself. He says he baited them to trade up. They traded up virtually nothing to get JJ McCarthy whatever Sean Payton you got it buddy I think uh, there's a lot more uh, in the blood there you guys know how I feel about Sean Payton if you've been a fan of the channel for a while the Vikings the the Saints the Sean Payton the bloodline is just not a good bloodline for us right now there's bad blood all over the place but it is what it is let's talk about some of the other guys because there's a couple guys here that I think have at least a little bit of value in your drafts you see Spencer Rattler he goes the fifth round 15th pick to the New Orleans Saints I think that's interesting with Derek Carr there. Now, obviously, Derek Carr is going to be the starter day one. He's going to be the starter probably for a little while now, but I think he doesn't have as long of a leash as some people think. When I look at where I have Spencer Rattler in my rankings right now, this is a guy who I have as my 34th overall player. So he's a guy that I'm looking at in the back half of my third round, maybe my fourth round, depending on the league format that you're in, and somebody that I think I'm willing to take a gamble on because you put him on the taxi squad, you let him sit there for a year or two, however long your league allows it, 
maybe he gets some starting reps eventually with a Derek Carr injury, or maybe he just gets benched. Maybe you get something there in your super flex leagues. That's interesting. And Jordan Travis is the other guy that I think is interesting. He's also a player that I think is worth drafting in your rookie drafts. Jordan Travis is somebody right now where I have him as the 47th player in my rankings. So he is just barely making that top 48. He's just barely making that top 50 in those 10 man leagues that go for five rounds. He's more so a dart throw for me, a guy that I think is going to get an opportunity potentially. It's not guaranteed, but he could get an opportunity with Aaron Rodgers being a little bit older. Now, if you looked at a video that I did a while back, we talked about like late round dart throws, guys that are kind of being slept on in your drafts. I talked about Jordan Travis and actually in that video, I said the best potential landing spot that I felt for him would be the New York Jets behind Aaron Rodgers. It happened. It happened. This was the best scenario for Jordan Travis. So that makes him draftable for me, but definitely somebody you should only be using one of your very last picks on. The other guys, Pratt, Leary, Milton, not worth drafting to me. I don't think any of those guys are worthy of being drafted in your rookie drafts. Now, moving on to the running back position, this was a position that we said was a little bit weaker in this class and I think the NFL draft capital kind of showed us that they valued it this way as well first running back off the board Jonathan Brooks 214 that is a player that we all kind of expected to be the RB1 it was between him or Trey Benson and when you look at the actual draft capital you I mean you see how we just sorted it we sorted it from earliest to latest Brooks and Benson they're the one and the two off the board I also had Corum as my three he's the one off the board there too and Marshawn Lloyd was my four he's the four off the board too so the way that I had it is the way it went let's talk about the landing spots Brooks in the second round to the Panthers I think this is one of the only running backs that is going to be guaranteed production from day one he's probably going to be a starting running back out the gate over Chuba Hubbard over Miles Sanders now he is recovering from the ACL so that is going to be something to monitor he may not be fully healthy right away but if he is healthy week one he should be the starter in this offense. Now, Trey Benson, he goes to the Arizona Cardinals in the third round. I like this landing spot. The eventual guy who is going to take over from James Conner, he may not get a lot of work this year. Think of it a little bit how Javante Williams was as a rookie. He didn't really get a lot of burn early on in the season, but as the year progressed and as he got into year two, it became Javante Williams' team. I expect that to be the same thing with Trey Benson. And we talk about the Arizona Cardinals being a team that is on the rise. Definitely like this landing spot for Trey Benson. Corum goes to the Rams in the third round. This is very, very tough for people who like Kyron Williams. This is tough for people who like Blake Corum because I think both of these guys are going to eat into each other's production, eat into each other's workload. It's not going to be fun for fantasy football for either of these guys. But if one of them is the guy that gets the full workload, that guy should be valuable. The problem is I don't know if either of them are going to be valuable. So, uh, uh, definitely somebody to temper expectations with. When I look at where I have Blake Corum in my rankings, I have bumped him down a little bit. He is currently my 21st player off the board, and I still think that I'm a little bit higher than consensus on Corum. But 21st, late second round pick, you throw it on Blake Corum, probably worth it at that point. But He's in my tier six of players, similar to like a Jalen Polk or a Troy Franklin. Now we'll keep it moving. You see Marshawn Lloyd. He goes to the Green Bay Packers in the third round. I don't love the landing spot. I love the player. I don't love the landing spot because they re-sign A.J. Dillon. They bring in Josh Jacobs. This feels like there is going to be a very crowded room and Marshawn is going to have to earn his keep. It could be a year or even two years before Lloyd is even seeing any type of valuable reps. Not really a big fan of that. I think I bumped him down in my rankings a little bit as well. He is falling out of my top two rounds. He's a third round pick for me at this point. So not really somebody that I am like going out of my way to go get on my rosters. Now, Jalen Wright, he goes to Miami Dolphins. Some people are worried for Devon Achan. I'm not super worried for Devon, but I think this signals the end of Raheem Mostert. Obviously, he had gotten the extension. That is probably not worth a damn at this point because Jalen Wright, he can do everything Mostert can do. Plus, I think this is a player who's going to be paired with Achan for the future. They just keep adding speed, man. Jalen Wright, a speedy guy. Devon Achan, speedy guy. Moster, a speedy guy. All these guys, they just want to keep adding them. Jalen Wright in the fourth round. The draft capital doesn't tell me that they value him super highly, but he should be a piece in this offense and definitely somebody worth looking at in your rookie drafts, especially in the later rounds, because right now the way that I have Jalen Wright valued is 29th overall. This is somebody that you could probably take a shot on in that third round and probably feel okay with the opportunity that he can get, especially coming from that Mike McDaniel, that Kyle Shanahan type of tree. We know the running backs in those systems. Every once in a while, somebody gets some extra opportunity. I mean, that happened with A-Chan last year. That happened with Mostert at times. This is going to be an opportunity for Jalen Wright eventually down the road. We'll see what happens. Now, going down the rest of the board here, Bucky Irving, he goes fourth round to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think he's going to be a major pain in the butt for Rashad White. I think he's more a complimentary piece. They didn't have a backup there. Bucky Irving seems like he's most likely going to be the backup there. I think he's a guy who late third round, early fourth round of your rookie drafts, that's probably where you're looking at him. Will Shipley, he goes to be the backup up to Saquon there in Philadelphia. 
Ray Davis is interesting. I actually like Ray Davis a little bit here in this Buffalo Bills landing spot. I have him a little bit higher than some of those guys that we just talked about. He is currently my 31st player. So somebody that I'm still looking at in my rookie drafts, I think he can complement James Cook very well. And we know that they wanted to run the ball, especially in the back half of the year last year. I think they're going to continue to do that. And Ray Davis, he's a talented running back. I like what he put on tape. I like the landing spot here in Buffalo as well. Now, Isaac Garendo, fourth round, going to the San Francisco 49ers. We just talked about that landing spot. We talked about the opportunity that some of these guys get. Now, obviously, nobody is coming in and competing with Christian McCaffrey. But Christian McCaffrey is a little bit older. He's a guy who has some wear and tear on the tires. I think Garendo could potentially be the handcuff, potentially be the backup to Christian McCaffrey. And we know the speed of Garendo. Garendo showed it off at the Combine. This is a guy who could have some opportunity in this backfield as a backup, as a handcuff to Christian McCaffrey. So you should draft him accordingly. Have him right now as my 38th player. And then we'll keep moving down. Sione Vaki, he's not necessarily a guy that I'm looking at drafting. He's a converted safety to a running back. I think he's more of a Swiss Army knife. I'm not really looking to draft him for my fantasy teams. Braylon Allen, unfortunately, a guy that we liked. He goes to back up Brees Hall. Just a handcuff at this point, in my opinion. Audrey Estimate to the Broncos, just a handcuff, I think, to Javante Williams. And you even have Jaleel McLaughlin there as well. So this is somebody that, even though he had a bad combine, he goes in the fifth round to the Broncos. I, I don't know how we should really be valuing Audrey Estime. I have him right now as my 42nd player. So somebody at the end of your draft, you could potentially add on your bench, but nobody that I think is going to be a difference maker for fantasy. Now you have Ali. He goes to the Baltimore Ravens in the fifth. Tyron Tracy to the Giants in the fifth. Keelan Robinson to the Jaguars in the fifth. Isaiah Davis to the Jets in the fifth. And then you have a couple guys here in the sixth round. Vidal to the Chargers. Jace McClellan to the Falcons. Jawar Jordan to the Texans. And Dylan Luabe to the Raiders. Now I'll tell you, out of this group right here that we're looking at, there's a couple guys that I think are intriguing enough for me to spend a late round pick on them some of the guys that we're going to be considering keep in mind you have to be in the top 50 for me to even consider drafting you some of those guys for me are going to obviously be Braylon Allen we'll draft him as the backup I think Tyrone Tracy I think he's interesting here for the New York Giants obviously we know that that backfield isn't super talented Devin Singletary being the number one right now he's interesting enough I think Vidal for the Chargers is interesting as well as a dart throw and I also think Loabe for the Raiders is interesting all of these guys the back feels that they are in are murky, have some older guys, have some unproven guys. Now, obviously, I think a lot of people for Lawabe are going to say that Zamir White is the first up. I would agree, but Lawabe could come in and beat out Alexander Madison as the backup, potentially. Alexander Madison wasn't very good last year for the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe Luabe comes in and takes that job. Vidal, obviously, he's competing with J.K. Dobbins coming off of an injury, an older Gus Edwards, and then Tyrone Tracy, like we mentioned, Devin Singletary, some other guys here in this backfield. All of those guys are interesting dart throws that I'm willing to take a shot on in the fourth round, in the fifth round of my rookie drafts, as long as you're drafting them in that 40 to 50 range of overall players. Now, we'll move on to the wide receivers because this is a big point of this class. There was a lot of wide receivers taken in the first round. We'll talk about them. Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals. This is going to be incredible for Marvin Harrison's stock. You pair him with Kyler Murray. This is everything you wanted. Tier of his own, the number one wide receiver in this class. Now, the next two guys, I think some people have been disappointed with the landing spots. You get Malik Neighbors to the New York Giants. He goes to be the number one for Daniel Jones. Obviously, some more target competition there with DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Now, I think you got to keep in mind that even though Malik Neighbors is going to a situation where he is not necessarily going to the best quarterback in the NFL, he's not going to the highest passing volume offense, he's going to an offense where he is the only guy who is worth a damn in that receiving core. He is going to see a ton of targets, whether they're high quality or not right away, he's going to see a lot of volume. I think we should value Malik Neighbors similarly to how Drake London was early on in his career. Now, if they do get the quarterback upgrade or if Daniel Jones does take that step forward, obviously Malik Neighbors takes a step forward as well, but he is still my wide receiver too in this class. I have him in the same tier as Odunze. Odunze, a guy, like I said, target competition, but Keenan Allen has one more year left on his deal. He's a little bit older. I could see Keenan Allen playing this season and then Romo Odunze taking over as the number two or even the number one next year, depending on how well he plays in 2024. So still a player that I am drafting within the top six players of my rookie draft. You got Brian Thomas Jr. He goes to the Jaguars. I like this fit. He gets to play with Trevor Lawrence, be the number one for Trevor Lawrence long term. May not be at day one, but he will be at long term. And then you got Xavier Worthy. Worthy goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. People are going to lose their minds. Right now, Worthy is rising up my board just a tiny bit. A guy that I had as like my wide receiver eight, wide receiver seven early on. A guy that I was worried about because I felt like he needed a specific scheme or a specific type of coach to come in and be good right away. Andy Reid is that coach. So everything that we were worried about, I think we shouldn't necessarily be too worried about it with Xavier Worthy, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. 
all of those things there in Kansas City. I think Xavier Worthy, he's a guy who you can take at the back end of your first round, probably in that 11 to 12 range, 10 to 12 range, probably where I'm looking at Xavier Worthy. I think he's worthy of the pick there as well. Now, Ricky Pearsall, Xavier Leggett, both of these guys surprised people because they were first round picks and people didn't necessarily expect them to be first round picks. Now, Leggett, he was a player that I was very low on coming into the NFL draft. And even though he got first round draft capital, I'm still not very high on Leggett. Now, he has risen in my ranks a little bit, but I'm still not sold on Leggett as a prospect. And the situation here in Carolina isn't the greatest of situations either. Leggett currently sits as my 19th overall player in my rankings, so somebody that I'm still taking in the second round. But he is not a guy that I'm considering with a first round pick or even an early second round pick in my rookie drafts. I know he got the draft capital. I'm just going to stand on my stance of Leggett. I don't necessarily think this is a good spot for him. But Ricky Pierce, a player I was high on. I think the situation for Pearsall is going to be interesting because we've heard about rumors of maybe a Brandon Ayuk trade, maybe a Debo Samuel trade. Well, the draft came and went, and usually that's when those trades happen. We haven't seen that trade happen. So Ricky Pearsall, he's going in the first round to the San Francisco 49ers. He's a guy right now who currently sits as my 18th player overall in my rankings. I think this is going to be a situation where Pearsall might be in a similar situation to Romo Dunze. The only issue is that Pearsall is not as talented as Romo Dunze. Now, obviously, Brandon Ayuk, he's going to need a contract extension. If they can't come to terms to it, Pearsall could be their backup plan. Maybe they end up trading Debo later down the road at the deadline or something like that, and Pearsall gets it. But as of right now, I don't know if any of those trades are going to happen in the offseason, which will mean that Ricky Pearsall will be at best probably the wide receiver three going into the year. Now, obviously, that could change at any given point. I'm not sitting here saying that I know what they're doing on the phones right now, but at the end of the day, what we know today, both of those wide receivers are still there. So Pearsall is most likely the number three. And in an offense with George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey and some other guys in this offense as well, I think the opportunity might not be what we want it to be for a first round wide receiver right away. But still a player that I enjoy watching, a player that I think is very good and a player that I will still be drafting in my rookie drafts. But don't let that first round draft capital push him too high up your board. Still a guy who I think is a mid to late second round pick at best. Now let's keep going down the board. Another one. Keon Coleman, a guy that I was not very high on. I said for Keon Coleman, he is probably a better big slot type of wide receiver. But when you look across the NFL and we said, hey, what is the best possible landing spot in the NFL for a rookie wide receiver? There was a couple places that popped up. The Los Angeles Chargers and the Buffalo Bills. Those were two of the best landing spots we thought that had the most opportunity for a rookie to come in day one. Keon Coleman goes second round to the Buffalo Bills. Next after him, Lad McConkey goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. Both of these guys are going to be risers in people's rankings. Both of these guys should be risers in people's rankings. Right now for me, Keon Coleman he is sitting as my 15th overall player. He is sitting as my wide receiver seven, I think in my rankings right now, seven or eight. So he has gotten a significant bump and that's because I trust Josh Allen. I trust the Buffalo Bills to utilize Keon Coleman in a proper way. And quite frankly, the opportunity is just too good for him. 52% of their targets last year have been vacated. There's a massive, massive, massive target share that he can come in and get right away. Now, Lad McConkey, a player that I've been very high on, he goes to a great situation. Play him with Justin Herbert. Definitely worthy of a late first round pick in your rookie drafts as well. Now we'll speed through. We'll talk about some of these other guys here. Jalen Polk, second round to the New England Patriots. He is going to be Drake May's number one. I think this is interesting. He is definitely a riser in my rankings as well. A guy that I would consider in the 20 to 24 range, I think most likely. And I might be a little bit lower on him than some people in the community right now. But I was very low on Jalen Pohl coming into the draft process. But this is a great situation for him as far as an opportunity standpoint comes. Adonai Mitchell, a faller for us. He is going to go to the Indianapolis Colts. He didn't get the draft capital that we were thinking he could get. We were thinking he could potentially go in the first round. And then he goes to an offense here in Indianapolis where he's going to be the number two to Michael Pittman Jr. You still have Josh Downs there. Adonai Mitchell maybe even being in a run-heavy offense with Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson. I think he is still worthy of a second-round pick. But that first round, that late first round type of draft capital that we thought maybe we would be taking out an eye in, that is not the case anymore. He's probably more in that 15 to 20 range. Now going down the board, Malachi Corley, Jermaine Burton, Roman Wilson, Jalen McMillan, and Luke McCaffrey, all of these guys come off the board in the third round. 
Corley to the Jets, Burton to the Bengals, Wilson to the Steelers, McMillan to the Buccaneers, and McCaffrey to the Commanders. My favorites of these guys are going to be Malachi Corley. You know, he's been a favorite of the channel for a while. He is still sitting in my top 24. He goes to the Jets. Jermaine Burton going to the Bengals. I like this fit for him too. Also a top 24 player for me. Roman Wilson to the Steelers. That's a great fit for Roman Wilson. Now, Roman Wilson was a player that I felt like he needed to have the right coach to be able to utilize him. There's no doubt that the Steelers and Mike Tomlin, they utilize their wide receiver. I think this is a good spot for Roman Wilson, but still a player who is outside of my top 24. I have him at 25, so he's not too far out, but somebody that I think is still worthy of a top 25 selection. McMillan, McCaffrey, these aren't players that I'm like going crazy over. I think the landing spots are whatever. I think these guys are guys that I'm not taking in the top 24 picks. You shouldn't be taking them in the top 24 picks. Now it's worth noting with Jalen McMillan, they do have Chris Godwin in the final year of his contract. So this could be a year two play. Maybe McMillan is going to be the guy after Godwin leaves if they don't come to an extension with him. That's worth monitoring, but not a guy that I think is worthy of a top 24 pick in your rookie drafts. Now, this is a big one. You see the next one, Troy Franklin in the fourth round to the Denver Broncos. Troy Franklin been a favorite of the channel, a favorite player of mine throughout this draft process, and he fell in the NFL draft. It was not something that I expected to happen, at least not that type of a fall. Now, Troy Franklin, he's still a player that I believe in, still a player that I trust in, and quite frankly, I think the landing spot in Denver reuniting him with Bo Nix saved the way that I felt about Troy Franklin because if he went anywhere else, this could be bad news bears for Troy Franklin. But he goes here to Denver, early fourth round. They traded up to go get him. He plays with Bo Nix, his college quarterback. And you know, you have Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims. Cortland Sutton rumors have been around. Marvin Mims is unproven. I think there's opportunity for Troy Franklin here. So let's not let the slide discount Troy Franklin too much. I've seen people pushing him super far down their draft board, like wide receiver 14, wide receiver 17. That's not where I have him in my rankings. I have him as my wide receiver 11 still. He is going to be a top 20 player for me. Somebody I still think you should be drafting in the late seconds, early thirds, if you can get him that far, depending on how much your league fades him. Somebody I'm still believing in, somebody I'm still going to be drafting a lot of. But Troy Franklin, he goes to the Denver Broncos. Javon Baker to the Patriots. He could compete for that X wide receiver role in that offense. Devontae Walker, he goes to the Ravens, a complimentary piece probably to Zay Flowers. Jacob Cowing to the Niners. I like Jacob Cowing. This is not a good opportunity for him, unfortunately. So let's move on to the next rounds. You have Anthony Gold to the Colts, Smith to the Philadelphia Eagles, Thrash to the Cleveland Browns, Means to the Saints, Jaquan Jackson to the Titans, Malik Washington to the Dolphins, Johnny Wilson to the Eagles, Casey Washington to Sean Palmer, Jordan Whittington, all of these guys. At this point, if you're looking at a lot of these guys in your rookie drafts, I would say most of, if not all of these wide receivers should probably be outside of the top 48, outside of the top 50 in your rankings. The only ones that I think are going to be worthy of potentially being late round picks are Malik Washington going to that Miami Dolphins fit. I currently have him as my 43rd player in my rankings. Jacob Cowing, we saw him on the last page. He's somebody that I'm still drafting, even though the situation is not ideal. He's 45 for me. And then the only other player that is going to be in the top 50 for me is not even on the screen. Let's scroll down a little bit. Brendan Rice out of USC. He goes to the Los Angeles Chargers in the seventh round. I am still willing to take a shot on Brendan Rice. I currently have him right now as a fourth round pick in rookie drafts, my 37th overall player. I think this fit for him in Los Angeles, even though the draft capital is bad, seventh round pick is not very good. The hit rates on that are basically zero. The idea for Brendan Rice here, and the reason why I'm willing to take a fourth round pick and spend it on Brendan Rice is one, we know that he has the pedigree. Two, we know that the Los Angeles Chargers have a massive, massive hole in that wide receiver room. Now they drafted Lad McConkey. They have Quinton Johnston, Josh Palmer. Brendan Rice could find himself in a role in this offense. It's not a high likely chance, but there is a chance. And so I'm willing to take a shot on Brendan Rice. The rest of these guys, Whittington, Palmer, Flournoy, Johnson, all of these guys, I don't really care about them in my rookie drafts. Maybe if you want to pick them up off of waivers as UDFAs after your rookie draft, sure, by all means, but none of these guys, I think, outside of Brennan Rice and Malik Washington are going to be worth a draft selection in your rookie drafts. And now last but not least, let's move on to the tight end position. We will talk about a couple of these guys because I have quite a few of them actually in my top 48. So a couple of these guys I think are worth drafting. Brock Bowers in the first round, he goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't think a lot of us felt like that was going to be where he went. Obviously, they drafted Michael Mayer in the second round last year, unfortunately. 
Michael Mayer, probably not going to happen. The breakout this year's Trey McBride, probably not going to happen. He was a very, very low risk type of gamble that I think a lot of people were able to take advantage of this offseason. I was promoting him as somebody that I was willing to take a gamble on. We could not have seen this coming. Brock Bowers, he lands here. Unfortunate, but you know what? Brock Bowers is going to be the tight end one here in Las Vegas. And I think some people are starting to fade Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers, a guy who a lot of us had had as a top seven a top eight type of selection in the NFL in our rookie drafts. Now, where I have him right now is in that eight to nine range. He's not really moving too much for me. The only thing that I would possibly consider is maybe Brian Thomas jumps him now, but he's still going to be sitting in that same range. But if he falls lower in your rookie drafts, he's going in that 10, 11, 12 range. By all means, you're getting a value draft Brock Bowers at that point. Now, Ben Sinat, he's the second tight end to come off the board. He goes in the second round of the Washington Commanders. Ben Sinat is an interesting player. I currently have him as my 30th overall player. So somebody I think you can take a shot on in the third round. He is going to fall in as my tight end three for fantasy football purposes. I still have Jatavian Sanders as my tight end two. He went to the Carolina Panthers in the fourth round. And then you have Tip Ryman, Theo Johnson, Eric All, AJ Barner, Kate Stover, Jared Wiley. All of these guys drafted from rounds three to four. So I think the most interesting landing spots for these guys, the first one is probably going to be Theo Johnson. He goes to the New York Giants. Obviously, we've heard rumors of Darren Waller retirement. That is something to monitor. That is probably somebody you could draft. Eric All coming out of Iowa. He goes to the Bengals. They haven't necessarily had the greatest tight ends over the last couple of years. So maybe Eric All is the rookie that comes in and eventually finds himself in the starting role. You have AJ Barner to the Seahawks. No offense going to be there. Kate Stover to the Texans. A guy who I thought was the tight end three from a prospect profile. He has to play behind Dalton Schultz now in that offense. Jared Wiley to the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a guy who's going to be going to play behind Travis Kelsey. It's going to be interesting to see if he is the next man up or if it's Noah Gray or Irv Smith Jr. is still there right now. There's a lot of question marks there as well. And Tip Ryman, he goes the highest of all of those guys that we talked about. But going to the Arizona Cardinals, he feels more to me like he is going to be used in the run game to help block, to do some other things. He doesn't feel like a receiving tight end. That is going to be Trey McBride. So I'm not very interested in Tip Ryman. But let's talk about the guys that I have in my top 50. Obviously, I said Ben Sinat being at 30. I have Jatavian Sanders at 27 overall in my rankings right now. And the other guys that I think are worthy of draft selections, Theo Johnson, he is my 40th overall player. Cade Stover is my 44 fourth overall player. Eric All is my 46th overall player. And then Jared Wiley is at 51, but he's not going to be somebody that I'm drafting. Probably somebody that you should be looking to pick up as a undrafted free agent after your draft has concluded. Use your fab, use your waiver priority, go get a guy like Jared Wiley, maybe even a guy like AJ Barner. But outside of that, that's where the tight ends go and that's how they've been drafted. So hopefully that was a good recap for you guys. So you can at least have a grasp on how I am viewing, how I am going to be moving forward with these fantasy football players in my rookie draft starting this week and going into the next week. Like I said, top 10 running backs, top 10 wide receivers later this week as well. Wide receivers on Wednesday, running backs on Friday. And with that being said, this is all I have for you guys today. So if you did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that like button. It is the best free way to show this channel some support. Also, make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel. That way you catch all of our future videos when they do come out. Make sure you're hitting that notification bell. That way you never miss a future video. And last but not least, make sure you are a member of our Discord. We do have a Discord linked in the description. We are in there helping you guys with your 2024 rookie drafts, helping you with trades, all of that stuff. Any Dynasty Fantasy Football advice you need, you can find it in our Discord. Also, you can find my rankings in our Discord. So if you want access to my rankings, go into our Discord and find them there. So with that out of the way, I will see you guys on our next video. But until then, peace out.